I'm Dr. Blake Mathis. I'm an assistant professor of environmental science at Ohio Dominican University. Today I've brought my ornithology class out to capture, band, and release birds. The nets are such that the birds can fly directly into them, they don't notice them, and then they just kind of hang down in here in this bag and get tangled up a bit. What's, uh, what's this piece of vegetation? Nesting material. So she's building a nest right now. And there's kind of an excitement about coming up to the net and just wondering what's there. So we have here a, a nicely marked white-throated sparrow. This bird will be leaving soon, they'll be heading up north to breed. This is a, uh, a female robin. She has a real light gray back. She's not real happy. So right now he's thinking, I need to get back and defend my territory against all those other cardinals who are trying to come in here right now and steal my uh, female and the breeding territory. <laughs> so now I've taken some measurements, uh, some body mass, length of the wing, length of the tail, um, size of the bill. I also have on here uh, this federal bird band, which is uh, just a real lightweight aluminum band, has a unique number on it. So this is the only bird that will ever get that number. If this cardinal's ever seen again, if anybody ever sees that band again, we'll know exactly where he came from and banded on this day. Most banded birds are never seen again. So you have to band a lot of birds to ever get any sort of decent sample size. So just, uh, by looking at bird populations, we can really see a lot about the health of an ecosystem. Uh, for instance, an example of that would be the use of DDT, which was used regularly and widespread to control mosquito populations. We realized because of the problem with the bird populations, especially the large birds, like the raptors, eagles and hawks and so forth, that DDT was actually having large scale environmental effects that we hadn't realized. Um, this indigo bunting is probably a migrant that came in last night. So his uh, main goal right now is going to be feeding. He probably was flying overnight, um, probably upwards of 40 or 50 miles. They're pretty. I like to look at them up close. <laughs> Soft and tiny. I feel like I could crush it actually, but it's it's cool. That's a great level of knowledge, I think, because when you're, when you're in the classroom, you can only learn so much, but by coming out here and being able to apply what you've learned, it also just kind of, I don't know, polar bird, that's kind of cool. I want to do more field biology, and so this kind of is what I want to do. So there's an area here of no feathers, which is going to be become highly vascularized, so she can put that down on the eggs and keep the eggs warmed when she's incubating. So take a look here. So one of the things I'm always very careful about with my research is to make sure I don't harm any of these organisms. Um, the birds are immediately released uh, after uh, all the measurements are taken and after they're banded. So they're able to, in most cases, return back to normal activities within maybe half of an hour. 